Hello, my name is Gary Levinson. I'm the founder and master luthier at Blade Guitars and Gary Levinson Acoustic Guitars. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about my story and how I got involved in this crazy business. I was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1949. The family moved to a small railroad town south of Chicago called Galesburg. Now, Galesburg is a small town, 35,000 people then and 35,000 people now. It's in the middle of the cornfields where the only thing that you can see for miles and miles is miles and miles. Galesburg has, though, a very interesting program in the schools for music. I grew up in a musical family and uh, was involved in the choir at church and singing at home. I started playing piano when I was six, and the reason for that was not because of my great talent, but because in first grade, I was always the first one done with all of the work that the teacher would give out. And then I would go around and bother all of the other students. So the teacher called my mom and says, Mrs. Levinson, would you please have your son take piano lessons? Because we have a piano in the gymnasium, and then when he's done, we can put him in the gymnasium and lock him in there until we're ready for him to come out again. Well, I went on and got a guitar. Actually, my brother got the guitar and I immediately stole it from him. This was in 1959, which of course means that in the summer of 59, I managed to predate Brian Adams' summer of 69 by 10 years. So I started playing guitar, and in junior high school, which we're talking about grades seven through nine, I uh, started playing trumpet, euphonium, got involved in the choir, was playing in the marching band, was playing in the orchestra, so there was a lot of music going on. When I got to high school, the Galesburg Senior High School had a fantastic music program, theater program, and I got involved in several music groups and started doing what at that time was called urban folk music. You could think back to people like the Chad Mitchell Trio or Peter, Paul and Mary, Bob Gibson, uh, and we had a ball did a lot of music uh, in trio of uh, Simon and Garfunkel type of things. And uh, really, music became an important part of my life. Two things had happened in the 50s in Galesburg that really accompanied me for the rest of my life. As I just mentioned, starting to play guitar in 1959 was the one. In 1956, for the first time, Jacques Cousteau's film, The Silent World, aired on television, and of course the television screens were about this size at that time, black and white, but the whole wonder of the underwater world just completely opened my imagination to what it is I'd like to do. Well, I started teaching guitar in a small shop in Galesburg, Illinois in 64, and across the street from the shop was a bar that had country music every weekend. So one Monday morning, uh, this country guitar player and singer came in and unpacked his Gibson Southern Jumbo, which was about as flat as a pancake. He had fallen off the stage drunk during the weekend and landed on his guitar and completely demolished it. So he asked me if I could repair this for him, and I said, of course. I had absolutely no idea how I was going to do it, but I thought this could be fun. He asked me for a price on the repair and I gave him one and he says, it's not worth it for me, here you can have the parts. And that's how I got involved in doing guitar repair. So I took this guitar home, took it apart and started putting the pieces together little by little until I had it all together and refinished it and had so much fun doing this that I would go around trying to find broken, used, damaged instruments and would do the same thing again, taking these apart, try experimenting on them, learning how to refinish, learning how to refret. And that's how I basically got started in doing guitar repair. 
Well, this brings us to 1968 when I headed off to the University of Illinois. Now, I had a scholarship to go to the University of Illinois, and it may not be the most logical place you would think if you wanted to study oceanography, but they had a wonderful program that was involved with the American National Science Foundation. And I got involved in that program uh, early on. Uh, I had the great fortune of meeting a man by the name of Professor William Wynne Hay, who was a world-renowned, and actually still is, a world-renowned oceanographer. And Bill had asked me uh, if I would help him on some of the research work he was doing in Florida and the Bahamas, which was an absolute dream for me. So I would spend uh, all of the holiday periods, whether it be the Christmas period, Easter, or summer vacations, in laboratories, out on the water, diving, doing research work, doing population studies in underwater environments, and really getting deeply involved in oceanog oceanographic projects. Parallel to this, there was the other life. The University of Illinois had 35,000 students at the time. And we had local talent that went on to make it absolutely huge in the music business. People like Dan Folkeberg, who in 1975 was named Vocalist of the Year. You had REO Speedwagon with, with Gary Richrath. And a lot of other smaller, let's say less known groups, but really talented people. At the same time, being this larger university, every major act in the world would come through Champaign, Champaign-Urbana, where the University of Illinois was, and would play the stadiums. So we had everyone from Cat Stevens, Rolling Stones, Sly and the Family Stone, the Grateful Dead, come through town to do their concerts. Well, in order to augment my scholarship and have some spending money, I got a job doing guitar repair at one of the local shops. Uh, again, good fortune for me, the person who ran the repair shop was a man by the name of David Caron, who went on to become one of America's best and most acknowledged violin and cello builders. And during the time I was working at this shop, he also taught me how to fit violin bridges, rehair bows, set sound posts. So I had a chance to learn another set of skills associated with stringed instruments. Most of the time I spent working on guitars and under David's watchful eye, I uh, had a chance to better hone my skills. Uh, during the same period, the other young man in the shop was a man by the name of John Gray uh, and uh, we had a lot of fun in the repair shop. We had so much fun, and we enjoyed the work, and we're laughing all the time, that the owner of the shop came in and fired me. She told me, you cannot be working and laughing that much, so we've got to get you out of here. So that was how I got fired for the first time, and the next day, both David and John quit and we went out and set up our own shop. And uh, during this whole period, the wonderful thing was these people who would be coming to town, whether it was uh, Leo Kotke, who would be playing in a smaller club, or the, the huge worldwide known groups like the Grateful Dead, if they needed anything done on their guitars, whether it be setup work or a small repair, they would come to us. So this was the first interaction with these, this level of musician and finding out what it was that they really wanted their instruments to do. At the same time, I was playing in a couple of bands, playing six nights a week, uh, again to augment my income. So I had a chance to spend a lot of time on stage, a lot of time in front of the audience, and play music, and it was, of course, a wonderful time. Uh, you think of the end 60s, early 70s, what a time to be involved in music. That brings us now to 1971, when I got a scholarship from the American National Science Foundation to go to Switzerland for a year and work on my uh, master's degree in geology. 
Spent the year there, went back, spent the summer in 1973 uh, playing music until I got a phone call one day from the professor I'd worked with at the University of Basel saying, we have a scholarship for you now from the Swiss National Science Foundation. How would you like to come back to Switzerland and finish up your second master's degree? And that took place two weeks later, totally unexpectedly, and I was off to Switzerland and have been there ever since. <laughs>